Hey everyone, this is Vedu, and this is my shade guide. So in this guide, I'm going to try to go in depth and try to cover everything, all the questions that you may have, whether you are already maining a shade, whether you are thinking about maining it, or whether you want to pick the class up as a secondary main, it should cover all the questions that you may have. There will be timestamps in the video, so you can go through the particular section that you may need help with, or you can just watch the video in its entirety. First off, I'm going to have a general breakdown of the class. I'm going to split it up in six different categories. We'll start off with mobbing first. Shade is pretty average mobber. Um, it does have some advantages over other pirates. Um, it does have some disadvantages, however. Once we get into it, you will see all the skills that help Shade out as far as mobbing goes, but you will also quickly see some downfalls. Overall, I will give Shade a 3.5 star rating out of 5 for mobbing. Next up is bossing, and this is one of the areas where Shade really starts to excel at, especially as a solo bosser. The toolkit that Shade has just makes it really good in a lot of different situations. It's very versatile bosser. Um, the only thing that it lacks is the raw damage output is sort of low. Other than that, Shade is just solid all the way around. I'm obviously biased, but I think Shade's one of the best bossers in the game. With that being said, I would give Shade a 4.5 out of 5 star rating. Next up, I decided to make a separate category strictly for damage because I know I would get a lot of questions about this in particular. So with that being said, Shade is about middle of the pack. Um, it's not great damage, but it's also not you know trash tier damage. It's just about middle of the pack, so I would give it 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up is Utility, and this one was honestly really hard to decide to give a score on. Because Solo Shade Utility is really good, the kit is honestly one of the best in the game, but when it comes to party bossing, however, Shades just get overshadowed by so many other classes. There's just a lot of classes that do what Shade does, but better. So with that being said, you know, Shade's not like top tier utility for any one specific thing in general. Um, so with that being said, I would give it 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up is survivability. I'm not going to go into too much detail right now. Just take my word for it. Shade survivability is absolutely insane. Easily 4.5 out of 5 stars. In the last category, difficulty of gameplay, Shade is a very straightforward class, especially compared to a lot of the newer classes. Stall it 4.5 out of 5 stars as far as ease of uh, gameplay. Alright, so the next section of the video is going to be over all of our skills. This guide is going to assume that you're already past level 200. So with that being said, I'm not going to go over you know, the first, second, and third job mobbing skills. I will link a video that goes over all of these skills in detail. Again, I'm not going to go over them here because once you get level, uh, once you get fourth job, and once you get bomb punch and spirit claw, you're never going to use these first, second, third job mobbing skills again. Shade isn't, you know, like these other combo classes um, where they use their lower level job skills. Basically, once you get bomb punch and spirit claw, that's what you're going to use for like forever. So with that being said, I'm not going to go over those in detail. We'll start off with the basic beginner skills. The very first thing that we're going to go over is Foxtrot. So Foxtrot is very underrated. Um, I actually don't see enough shades to use Foxtrot. I believe everyone knows about Shade's backstep. If you're watching this video, um, the majority of people that are interested in maining Shade, they fall in love with backstep and that's what makes them want to you know, pick Shade up. Again, not take anything away from backstep. Backstep is definitely an insane skill. Um, probably one of the best like bossing mobility skills in the game. But Foxtrot is a very good uh, counterpart to that. So Foxtrot acts as a teleport skill. If you are around mobs, it will teleport to the particular mob if it's locked onto it. There's a distance, however, um, and obviously you gotta be like relatively close to that mob in order to get teleported to it. If there is no mobs around, it will just act as a straight up teleport. So with that being said, Foxtrot 
will act a little wonky sometimes. Sometimes it locks onto mobs that aren't really mobs, and sometimes it just it's hard to predict what it's going to do sometimes. But overall, though, Foxtrot is a very nice uh, mobility skill for Shade. So with Foxtrot, you can use it as just a straight up teleport to go forward. You can jump teleport. You can backstep Foxtrot. So this is very useful if you're weaving in and out. So say you're fighting Lotus and Lotus is getting ready to push you. You can backstep and then immediately Foxtrot to get back right up in front of Lotus again. You know, so you're sitting here attacking. Backstep, Foxtrot, and then attack again. So it's very good for getting in and out of danger. You can jump, backstep, Foxtrot. You can jump, backstep, turn, and Foxtrot. Yeah, so you kind of get the gist of it. Foxtrot is a very underrated skill. Um, I would honestly like to see more shades use it as far as their mobility goes. Super underrated, just overall pretty good skill. And again, sticking with the relevant skills here, I'm not going to go over these two. I will link guides that goes over all these uh, skills in detail. The next thing that we're going to go over is our flash jump. Everyone knows what that is. Everyone's familiar with that. Shade can keybind their flash jump. So with that being said, you can look at the difference. This is me manually pressing flash jump. And then this is me keybinding flash jump. So you can just do it much faster with a keybound. You also have more control with it. It's all personal preference. I'll be honest with you, I typically do not use my keybind flash jump whenever I'm bossing. So well, next up is your second job skills. In second job I see four different skills that's worth talking about. The first two being our imp skills. So with the imp skills, you actually have three different ones. Um, you get another one in third job. In second job, however, you have the downward slash. And then you also have the forward slash. So these skills act as like a vacuum. Um, so if you have like mobs above you on a platform, if you use the downward slash, it would actually pull the mobs down toward you, you know, to, on the platform that you're on. Um, if you have mobs in front of you, it will pull them toward you again. Um, however, you know, you really need to get used to using these skills in a Boston situation. The reason being is because it sets a debuff on the mob. So if you read, it sets a um, final damage debuff of 10% for 15 seconds. And it does have like a little icon above its head that I'll put on screen. So which imp should you use? Well, that's really just up to you. Honestly, it's personal preference. I don't think there's a correct answer, it's just whatever you works best for you. Um, they each have their own sort of like advantages. So with the forward slash, it has obviously the most um, distance like in front of you. With downward slash, the advantage for it is you can actually use it as you jump. The other ones you can't. The disadvantage with that one though is it obviously doesn't have a very um, far horizontal range. So, but it is good because um, you can use it as you're jumping and stuff. The last one, and the one that I personally use, is the one that you get in third job, which is the spin slash. It can hit mobs behind you and in front of you. Again, you can't use it as you jump, but that's the one that I've always used. I just like that one the best because a lot of the times I'm like facing away from the boss. So it's nice that I can hit the boss like behind me with this one. You're really gonna be using the imp blades a lot because like I said, you're basically getting 10% final damage uh, debuff on the boss by using it, which lasts for 15 seconds. So that skill and that internal timer in your head of, hey, I need to use this every 15 seconds, you know, that's gonna kind of like be ingrained within you as you're bossing with shade. Um, that's why if you see a lot of shade 
bossing videos and gameplay and stuff like that, you know, you're going to see them throw those imp blades um, before they burst or just throughout the boss battle. So with that, typically a good way that I like to time it and a lot of people do. So we'll talk about this skill a little bit more in our fifth job, but your true spirit claw, the cooldown on it is six seconds. So basically after like two true spirit claws, it's going to be about time to recast your imp blade again. So we're not going to count the first one, um, just because it's like zero. So, so that's zero seconds, we're going to keep attacking. That's six seconds. Keep attacking, keep attacking. That's 12 seconds. So then like right after that, you know, you, you know that it's about time to recast it. And then you can start the cycle over again. So yeah, so like I said, that will just kind of come naturally to you. I mean, as you're doing it, you kind of get that internal timer in your head, you know, just as you progress. The next skill is backstep. You know, we're not really going to talk about this like too much. Um, I think most people already know what this skill does. Extremely good. I already talked about it a little bit in this video. Um, you can link it with Foxtrot to weave in and out of bosses and stuff like that. Another thing, backstep pretty much animation cancels like anything. So if you use, you know, true spirit call, backstep out of it. Attack still goes off. Um, your you know, little spider skill. It went off. Or spirit gate. Spirit flow. You know, I mean, it's the skills. <laughs> the skills is really fucking good. I mean, there's no, uh, there's nothing much more to say about it. And the last skill that we're gonna talk about in second job is our fox spirits. So these are kind of like um, Night Lord's Mark. They randomly summon as you're attacking, and they will hit the you know they will hit the monsters um, a couple times. So yeah, and this is also a toggle. So you're obviously, before you boss, you're always gonna wanna toggle that on. Make sure that's on. There are some instances where you're you know you're gonna wanna turn that off. Um, you can think of you know Chaos Pierre, for example. In third job, there's three main skills here that are worth talking about. The first one we've already talked about was second job. It's just our third imp skill. Again, this is the one that I like to use personally because it hits monsters behind you as well as in front of you. So that's just the one that I prefer. Um, after that, we will. this is our class blind. So it does have um, the cooldown on it. It's kind of long, 210 seconds, but it's pretty much like you know, like, for all intents and purposes, the cooldown on it is two minutes. Um, because even though the cooldown says 210 seconds, with our uh, fifth job skill, Spirit Flow, it resets, like, all the skills. So, for example, if you use this, then you use Spirit Flow right after it, um, it's going to reset that cooldown, so you can just use it again. With our class bind, so basically it acts as, like, a trap on the floor. So... Basically, it sets it down like this. If a monster walks into this area, they're gonna be bound. So it doesn't like it, this lasts for. Is it how long it lasts for? I don't think it does. Um, but yeah, so like it, it just stays down on the ground and probably like five, six seconds or whatever. And if a if a monster goes into it while it's on the ground, they get bound for ten seconds. So it's a pretty good it's a pretty good bind skill. Um, it doesn't target, you know, bosses. So like for example, like it's not like the the Urda bind, you know, where it kind of like hones in on them, and it's obviously not like Kana's foot bind. Um, you got to be a little bit more strategic with this bind, especially in bosses like Lucid uh, Phase Two, you know, where she's like flying around and stuff like that. You're gonna need to try to find the platform to put the bind on and wait for her to kind of like fall into it. But other than that, it's really good. I mean, any class that has a self bind is really good. And again, it's also really good too because it's gonna be up every time you burst. Shade is a two minute burst class. So if you can reset your bind every time that you're ready to burst, that's just really good. And that goes back into what I was talking about originally, that shade solo bossing is incredible. 
The last skill that we're going to talk about in third job, this is probably one of the most confusing skills for shades. Um, and rightfully so, just because the game doesn't do a very good job about explaining it. So we're actually not going to talk too much about it right now because Spirit Frenzy by itself is just really ordinary. Like it's honestly kind of trash by itself. Um, it's just 45% damage, 5 lines, 10 enemies hit. It's a key down skill. So you just hold it, you spin around, it gets a little bit bigger. You can't move with it, you're sitting duck. That's pretty much all it does in third job. But later on, whenever you unlock your hyper, whenever you unlock Spirit Bond Max, that's when Spirit Frenzy turns into your main bursting skill. So we're gonna circle back to Spirit Frenzy whenever we talk about our hyper skills. Fourth job, there's five different skills here that are relevant to what we're talking about. First one being Bomb Punch. Bomb Punch is your main mobbing skill. Um, mob Punch is really good. I mean, it's... The hitbox on it is huge. You can animation cancel it. So, like, if you don't animation cancel it, it goes through that full sequence. How you animation cancel it is you just press any key. Like, like any key, literally. Um, the forward key, you know, like, I'm slowly moving forward. If you just press that, it cancels it. Cancels it. Cancels it. If you're jumping, and you press another key again, it cancels it. So it's like, if you don't press anything, it goes through that full sequence. But I mean, it's it's honestly super duper easy to animation cancel it. It's just a pretty good skill overall. Um, your next one is Spirit Claw. So this is like your main bossing skill. And again, like the good thing with Shade is. Um, you know, Shade is multi-target class, so with your main mobbing skill, uh, Bomb Punch, you can hit 8 enemies. Uh, with Spirit Claw, you can hit, uh, well, that's true Spirit Claw. Uh, you can hit 3 enemies with it. So, again, if you if your main bossing skill can hit 3 enemies, that's really good. Um, so yeah, this uh, does good number of lines, it does 12 lines of damage, pretty strong. Pretty good range on it. Just overall, a really good skill. So it is you jumping, you get animation cancel it, by using backstab, or foxtrot. Not really too much more to say about it. Alright, the next three skills, these are the fun things. So we have death mark. So death mark, it kind of like saps the life out of whatever you strike with it. So it, it basically just is like a life steal. Um, the damage interval is one second. You do 250% HP. You absorb 1% of that damage dealt. Um, and it lasts for 15 seconds. Super good and a lot of different instances. This skill along with your other like toolkit, this is gonna keep you alive really good cooldown on it's only 60 seconds it lasts for 15 seconds it can be reset uh, with spirit flow just really really good so people get really confused with this skill basically it's just 20% funnel damage uh, debuff so if if it's a monster if it's a boss that can't be split so think of you know phase 3 hard lucid Phase 3, Hard Will, Gloom, Phase 2, Black Mage, uh, Dojo Dummies, stuff like that. Um, it just applies a debuff on its head and you know you just do 20% um, final dam more final damage to it. If it is a boss that can be split, so basically think of like Lotus, Damien, um, Dark Nell, um, you know, Phase 2, Lucid, so on and so forth. So basically it creates another body and on that secondary body that it creates it you do 80 percent less final damage to it but with that secondary body you can still apply other debuffs to it so if you split your soul. it's going to create a second body and then you can apply your blade imp to it and then once again going back to our second and third job skills the blade imp um, 
it applies a 10% final damage debuff on that secondary body. So um, it's obviously better if you can actually split the boss, especially for solo bossing or if you're bossing with other members that are multi-target. It lasts for 10 seconds. The internal cooldown timer of it is two minutes. And again, the actual cooldown of it doesn't really matter. The cooldown of it says 180 seconds, but again, all of these skills can be reset with your fifth job skill, Spirit Flow. So it doesn't really matter what the cooldowns say for any of these. And the last one that we're gonna talk about as far as our basic job skills is Spirit Ward. Spirit Ward, again, it just goes back to the survivability of Shade just being crazy. Spirit Ward is very similar to Kana's Foxfire, if you're familiar with that. So basically you create these three like little fish that swim oh, around you. And each one of those fish, if you activate one of them, they will disappear. So basically if you get hit, so say in like Chaos Vellum, if you get hit with like the following, or the following like uh, debris or whatever that typically stuns you. Well, if you get hit with that debris, it's not gonna stun you. It will just consume one of your fish. So I don't really need to explain how good that is. Um, and Black Mage, if you are gonna get hit with a curse, so say you accidentally get pushed, it's just gonna consume one of your fish instead of giving you a curse. That's This is one of the reasons why Shade is so good uh, as far as bossing. Uh, Spirit Ward is easily one of the craziest and most broken skills, honestly, uh, as far as bossing. And on top of that, the crazy thing about it, the cooldown on it is only 60 seconds. So with that being said, you pretty much have a 50% uptime of that, uh, just as it is, because the duration of it is 30 seconds, assuming that you know none of your fish gets um, uh, consumed. But again, it's resettable too. And also, your hyper skill will cast it um, just automatically sometimes every 100 seconds. So <laughs> it's an absolutely insane skill. It's one of the reasons why Shade, um, you know, th that Shade is used to hold Black Mage because you just don't take any curses with Spirit Ward active. Um, in addition to that, you know, you have your other uh, fifth job skills like Hero's Will which also nullifies abnormal statuses three seconds after use. So again, all that stuff blocks those abnormal statuses as well. And guess what? Shade can reset it. So with all of this said, between Deathmark, Spirit Ward, Hero's Will, Shade's survivability is just off the charts. All right, let's talk about our hyper skills. So as far as our hyper skills, um, we'll talk about uh, Spirit Incarnation first. So Spirit Incarnation is a pretty gigantic, it's, it's almost a full map attack mobbing skill that lasts for 8 seconds. It also is an iframe too, uh, so the cooldown on it is 120 seconds, and the duration of it is 8 seconds. So it's a key down skill too, so like you can, you, know, you can stop it at any time you like. Just hold it down and kind of just attack it pretty much almost the full map and like I said it's also an iframe so you're invincible as you casting it cooldown on it is 120 seconds really good um, not too much more to say about it damage is good on it as well just a really good skill overall next one is your shared hero skill heroic memories gives 10% damage it also applies it to any hero in the party Hit. The next hyper skill is one of the most important, if not the most important one, Spirit Bond Max. This just really sets your bossing off. So it's an entire book of information here that will try to break it down. So basically, like once you cast this, you're going to gain 35% damage, 20 attack, you're going to gain 20% boss damage, you're going to increase your attack speed by 1, so this is obviously very important you have to have this skill active in order for Shade to like hit zero attack speed. Um, it ignores enemy defense by 20%, and it also summons Moonbeam, which will attack for you randomly. With this skill being active, 
as you're attacking things you will see these like little pink things get um, dropped from the boss or from the monsters that you're hitting if you pick those livers up it will extend the skill so it is very possible um, if not expected that this skill has 100% uptime as you're bossing and as you're mobbing so you don't really need to worry about you know like the duration of it if you're bossing the correct way and if you're mobbing the correct way this skill should pretty much be 100% uptime with that being said it's really good <laughs> um, so yeah so you get the livers from it you need to pick those up so you're obviously going to need to have pets um, you know active so let's talk about some of the things it does in addition to those buffs the number one thing that it also does is we'll circle back to what we talked about earlier spirit frenzy as i said just by itself it's not very good but when spirit bond max is active um, your spirit frenzy basically does literally 700 percent final damage increase <laughs> so that's that's really good right um, the cooldown on that activation is 60 seconds so basically you have a mini burst every 60 seconds coincidentally with that your cooldown for your overdrive is 64 seconds and you have a little bit of window to activate this so realistically you should like every minute you should have overdrive and your enhanced spirit frenzy ready to go so you have like a mini burst every 60 seconds pretty much but actually i'm just going to show you and loose it since it's pretty much just a, a punching bag um so i will show you the difference without spirit bond max and after it so like i said the average or the damage like typically is pretty average with it well it's actually not even average it's just bad so this is with nothing applied so you can see it's just like doing nothing Okay, so whenever I apply Spirit Bond Max, whenever it's active and ready to use for your en enhanced Spirit Frenzy, it's gonna turn pink. So once you press it, you're gonna have to like actually attack something in order for it to active. So there it goes. Now it's active. And now you can see the difference in the damage. Um, the bar is obviously going down much faster with it active. It's also a keydown skill, as I said before, so you're going to need to hold that down. You can cancel it anytime you like. Um, yeah, and like I said, it's it's up and it's ready to go every 60 seconds. So basically you have that mini burst every 60 seconds. As long as you start your Spirit Frenzy, like as that pink icon is active, you will get the boost from it. So for your passive hybrid skills, this is what you should use. You should use all three in Spirit Claw, and then for your other two, you should use um, the Fox Spirit's repeated attack bonus. So it basically like makes it deal another um, attack, like kind of like ricochet around. Um, this basically allows it to do one more time, and then also you want to increase the summon chance by 10%. The other option is just flat out damage for 20% but these two are better all right so for shades fifth job um, we can talk about tri nodes this is a question that pretty much every single class guide gets asked you know I kind of break it up between bossing and mobbing tri nodes if you want it just like a flat out answer if you're like a beginner shade and you're like hey what's the best tri nodes um, I would say Spirit Claw, Bomb Punch, and Fox Spirits. That's pretty much going to get everything done for you that you're going to need to get done. However, if you're actually like serious about the class, I will strongly argue that my method and the way that I do it is just better overall than other people's methods. So how I do it... I have it separated so as you can see like I literally only have two tri nodes equipped it and this is what I use like unless I'm training or something like that if I'm bossing I only need two tri nodes those being spirit frenzy 
again because spirit frenzy when active with spirit bomb max like whenever this turns pink that's like your main burst that's your mini burst um so obviously with that being said you want to have that boosted fox spirits are your summons they're like your your version of your marks you want to have those boosted and then obviously spirit claw is your main bossing um, attack skill and that also increases the damage of true spirit claw as well so that's like my trot nodes that i want whenever i'm bossing so i kind of prioritize those so obviously i have like different iterations of those these are the ones that i have equipped it as i'm bossing whenever i am mobbing whenever i'm training i pretty much have bomb punch with anything else so um it doesn't really matter honestly that much like it really doesn't you know i just did bomb punch with death mark and with so splitter but it really doesn't matter that much on the scale of things i mean i'm sure there's like just a small fractional difference in damage if you pick certain skills um you know other than those two or whatever but again it on the scale of things it really doesn't matter as long as you have bomb punch maxed for your mobbing that's what you're going to need there so again if you're doing it this way you only need two tri notes you know your abc and then bac or whatever it is you don't need four different tri note spaces um like some other guides will tell you that you know for shades if you read some of them if you do it that way you're going to have to have four slots dedicated to tri notes and that's really unnecessary all right so let's talk about our other skills I'm going to talk about specifically the ca the class skills and also the job specific skills. I'm not going to go into super detail about all the decents and stuff. Like, I mean, I expect you to already know like what rope lift does and decent holy symbol and stuff like that does. So I'm not really going to go into too much detail about that, but I will share some information about a couple of the relevant ones toward the end. The first one is true spirit claw. This one is just a continuation of your regular Spirit Claw. So for example, your regular Spirit Claw before you get this skill, so let me unequip this. As you're attacking, you're just gonna, you know, you're just gonna keep attacking over and over and over and over and over. With True Spirit Claw active, every six seconds, it's gonna proc and it's gonna go off. The range on it is really big, like you're going to hit a, a really huge area. It also attacks up to 10 monsters at once. Does a lot of lines. It ignores 50% IED. Super good. Um, and it's what it looks like. Again, you can animation cancel out of it. it again, it activates every 6 seconds. That is a pretty, um, pretty decent DPS increase by having True Spirit Claw on a node and having it boost it. Next up is Spirit Flow. Spirit Flow is one of your main burst skills. So this is what you're gonna use um, you know before you know before you're getting ready to burst. It does give you 20% final damage. The duration of it is 60 seconds. Another thing that it does is it randomly procs different skills, you know, from your first, second, third and fourth job and a three second um, interval, or I'm sorry, a two second interval. It will sometimes proc your spirit incarnation, which is like your FMA, and the duration of that is three seconds. That's why I misspoke, I read it wrong, sorry. In addition to that, spirit flow is also the skill that resets your other skills. So I'm gonna use spirit ward, uh, death mark, my bind and my soul splitter so just keep an eye on those real quick all right so they're all on cooldown i use spirit flow they're off cooldown spirit flow incredible skill um it resets everything it gives you 20 percent final damage it randomly procs attacks basically has a 50 percent uptime I mean, it's just a really good skill. Overdrive, uh, again, this is like one of your main uh, things that you use right before you burst. Um, it gives 80% of your 
base attack power for 30 seconds. After that, it's gonna decrease your attack power a little bit by 15%, and the cooldown on that is 64 seconds. The next skill is Maple Goddess Blessing. Again, this is like the decent stuff, so I'm not really gonna go into it too much. Um, you know, it increases your damage by 20%, and it also increases your stat by a good margin. So you have to have Maple Warrior applied first in order to use it. So you can see, am I a drop gear? Yeah, I mean, well, I'm in some sort of gear right now. Um, and then after you use it, you can watch the stat go up quite dramatically. And then obviously it's gonna increase your damage and stuff as well. After that, roll of the dice. Um, this is another like really good skill all the way around. Um, just the node in general gives you a passive 40 attack. So with this, you can choose any number of these, and these all do different things. Two that you're primarily ever only going to use is number five and number six. So number five will increase your damage, and number six will increase the experience that you earn from killing monsters. So obviously number six is for um, grinding and mobbing. And five is for bossing, so if you use five, then cast roll of the dice. It activates number five, and then you get 20% damage increase by using that. So let's go all the way around. Next up is Spirit Gate. Spirit Gate is the only true summon that Shade has. So it's kind of like um kind of like Lucid Soul in a way. It's like basically like you set it down and it kind of just attack stuff. The range on it's pretty big. It's actually really strong. Um, off the top of my head, it does like 10 to 15% of my total uh, BA. Really strong summon. Um, it doesn't just do damage, however, um, if you read it. So basically it's gonna attack enemies and it's gonna create these like stacks, uh, these like debuffs on the enemies. So as it does that, it's gonna give um, critical rate up to 10 times so basically like it gives up to 80% critical rate and it gives up to 10% critical damage with that so the good thing with that obviously it gives you basically 10% critical damage to your entire party but if you're bossing with uh, Bowman who's vicious shot you know that 80% critical rate for them is you know, it's going to be really good for them. So, yeah. Cooldown on it's 90 seconds, so it has a relatively short cooldown. Durations of it's 40 seconds, so it basically has a 50% uptime. Really good summon, really good skill. Um, the next skill we'll talk about is Freud's Wisdom. Freud's is really good. It's just another thing that makes Shade's survivability so good. This skill is confusing for people at first to use because you have to like stack it. So what I mean by that, so here it is here. You have to press it and you see it's on cooldown. So whenever it gets down to basically zero, you have to cast it again. And you have like a you know three or four second window to cast it. Um, if you don't cast it within that window, it just, it goes off. And the cooldown on that's super long. So you can watch it here getting ready to go up you have to cast it you get like I think you get like five seconds to cast it you have to cast it if you don't it will go on cooldown and the cooldown of it's super long the cooldown is does it not say it what the heck uh, I don't see it on here but the cooldowns really long um, <laughs> yeah What's so good about Freud's, however, is once you're on uh, stack number five, you can see that it gives 25% boss damage. And then once you go into stack number six, it gives, it's basically an iframe for 25 seconds. So pretty good. The only downside is you really have to pay attention. It's just one more thing that you have to micromanage as you're bossing. Um, you know, Shade doesn't have really too much stuff that is micromanaging as you're bossing though. But you do need to pay attention to that. That's like one thing that you do need to pay attention to. Um, but you'll kind of just get the hang of it. It's one of those things that as you start using it and as you start bossing, 
as a shade, you know, you're probably going to drop it quite a bit, but you know, once you kind of get used to it, you're going to kind of get the feel for it. And again, it's just going to be one of those things like blade imp where you're just going to kind of have an internal timer that you're going to be looking down here constantly. You're going to be looking at your cooldowns and you're going to really be paying attention to all that stuff. So the next thing that we're talking about is this is like the newest V that we have, Smashing Multi-Punch. Um, I made a full video about this. It is a key down skill. I made a video about whether you should hold it down or whether you should just tap it. So I will show what it looks like. Um, really strong. I kind of link a couple of, the, of my other videos that goes in a little bit more detail about this. By the way, that's the six stack of Freud's. So I'm in an iframe right now uh, for 25 plus seconds. So. I'm invincible until this goes off. Um, but yeah, so with the Smash and Multi Punch, I'll link the couple of videos that I've already made about it, explaining it. it looks like this. It's really strong. Um, good skill overall. Um, good for bursting. It's a 90 second cooldown, so it's going to be up every single time you burst. Other than that, that's pretty much it for the Shade skills. The two things that I did want to talk about was decent speed infusion you will need to use this and you will need to have it active to hit zero attack speed in addition decent combat orders is very good for shade as well next up we're going to talk about inner abilities so as previously stated shade has to have plus one attack speed on your inner ability for you to hit zero attack speed so with that being said obviously the first line the most important thing is that you do have that plus one attack speed Next up after that, Shade innately has low critical rate, so to prevent us from putting a lot of blocks in our Legion under crit rate and from using the Phantom Link, the second line is recommended that you have critical rate. For the third line, it's really kind of like up to you as far as like what you're trying to do. A lot of people, especially if you're training, like to have a Meso line there um, just for extra Mesos, or you can swap it out for some sort of damage line, whether it be boss um damage to abnormal status mobs or whatever you may choose for that purpose next up we're going to look at different training areas so audio fills uh one of the high rank shades he made this great image for all shades um so basically like on this it's going to go from everywhere in the arcane river from vanishing journey up to limina Basically all the maps that's really good for shade, it's gonna it's gonna have like a star on the icon. You can check the arrow here for a reference of what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna let this scroll all the way through, starting from Vanishing Journey. At the end of this, I'm gonna showcase several different maps and you can see like actual video footage of shades training there. So you can see like the rotation and kinda I get kinda get an idea for the layout of the maps and, and how shade trains efficiently.
ahead and use decent combat orders first. Maple Warrior, Sharp Eyes, Speed Infusion, Roll of the Dice, Advanced Blessing, Heroic Memories, Maple Goddess. You can go ahead and set down your Spirit Gate. So that's like perfectly fine, like an actual boss battle, you know. Um, your Kana is going to like let you know basically like when the boss is going to be getting bound. So you can like obviously go ahead and set your Spirit Gate up perfectly fine. You're going to know where the boss is going to be bound at, so you know you can get that position set up perfectly fine as well, so it's not a big deal. After that, cast your Will Skill. Cast your AB Link. You'll use Spirit Flow next, and that also is going to reset your AB Link. After that, you'll use Spirit Bomb Max. Overdrive. Imp. Split. You can start the battle analysis. Right after that, you'll use Smash and Multi Punch, the True Spirit Claw, and then you can go ahead and right into your Spirit Frenzy. Hold that down. As soon as Spirit Frenzy's over, you'll use True Spirit Claw again, Blade Imp again, and then you can start spamming Spirit Claw. So we're at the end of the video, um, really long video. I'm sure I made some mistakes along the way, just being honest with you. Uh, after looking back through everything, if I do notice something that like sticks out or if I want to make a correction on something, I'll post in the comments below. Nevertheless though, I hope this guide was helpful to someone out there. Um, again, if you had questions about Shade, if you're already playing it or if you want to main Shade in the future, uh, I think this can be of use to the community. I do want to give a special thanks to everyone who contributed to this. Uh, I will post credit in the description below. Again, if you have further questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. I'll be happy to help people. Um, I really love this class. You know, I, I just, I really can't envision myself playing another class than Shade. Um, there's just something about it that just makes the game really enjoyable. With that being said, again, thank you all. Be safe and I'll talk to you soon.